We start by dragging a new linear gauge at the form. By default, it is horizontal, so we use the orientation property to make it vertical. We have to correct the size as well. We continue with the scales collection property. We need two scales. We add one and adjust its left property to 20%, which means the scale will start at 20% of the gauge's width. We need to adjust the major tick settings. We change the font to Lucida Sans Unicode. The font size will be 8%. and the font style shall be regular. The shape of the ticks is triangular by default. We change that to line. The maximum value of the first scale is 10. Then we need to hide the middle ticks and labels. We use the middle tick settings property to set show labels and show ticks to false. So far, the scale looks as it should. Let's add the pointer. We click the pointer's collection property of the scale object, add. Let's set its value to seven and its shape to rectangle. We give it a name because we want to access it later in code. Finally, we change its default fill to a solid black brush and its height to four. Let's see the pointer. Now it's time to add the ranges. From the ranges collection property of the scale object, we add a new range and align it in the true center. The fill must be a more colorful one. The values should range from 7 to 10, and it should start with 0.
We add the second range, but we name it because we will access it in code later on. The alignment is true center as well, and we are ready with the first scale. Let's place the second. It is located at 80% from the left side of the gauge. Here we also customize the major tick settings. We change font name, size and style in the same way we did with the first scale. The label alignment becomes outer outside. The label offset gets negative 5. And the tick shape is line again. The top offset of the scale is 15%. We hide the middle scale ticks and labels as we did with the left scale. We use the pointers collection property to add a pointer. We give it a name and paint it with a black solid brush. We change the pointer height and its value. The shape is rectangle. We will now customize the background of the gauge. We use the pre-paint event to do this. First, we cancel the default printing. Then we use an image resource we have already added to the project to create a tile image brush and paint the background. Finally, we need to add two labels above the two gauge scales. They are text objects. one of six types of scale elements supported by the linear gauge. We set its content, font, and margin properties. Finally, let's take a look at how the pointers get updated when the data for the gauge changes. 
As you see, we have an event fired every time the user updates the timescale of the dashboard, which changes the dashboard data. We retrieve the range and pointer objects, which we have named previously, and update their value and their coloring. We use a red or green brush, depending on the data value.